Okay, so after waiting for a while, I got a message that Docker is now up and running. That means my uh, my uh, the virtual machine is up. Uh, the Docker uh, application is configured over there, and now I can I can just uh, open a PowerShell and I can start uh, deploying the containers. But before that, Docker gives you one more option. So let's say you you want to have uh, access to the repositories so basically uh, so there are two options one is you can use public repository to to deploy your containers or uh, to, to to create the containers right and the, the other option is you can have your own private repositories where you can keep your containers so uh, post this session i'll be also um, I'll, I'll be also creating an, a session on a detailed deep dive on docker how to use docker what are the benefits how to get started uh, and this session will be for beginners okay so uh, let me do one thing uh, let me just go to the docker hub so I'll just go to the docker hub and So this is how the Docker Hub looks. So let's say I want to check for a container uh, for Jenkins. So I'll just search for Jenkins and it should populate uh, all the users uh, who, who has uploaded the containers for Jenkins, right? Let me, uh, okay, let me keep it over here. So, okay, so if you see, uh, Jenkins also has their own official repository, which you can use, to download your containers, right? So I can just click on, I can just type in Docker pull Jenkins and it will, it will download the Jenkins uh, container, which is available uh, in the public repository. But here, what I want to do is I also want access to the private repository. So like how I log into my uh, Docker hub, I'll do the same uh, on my web application too. So let me first log into my Docker Hub. Let me move it over here. So this is my user ID and the password. So if I log in, you see I have few of the containers which are already I have uh, pushed it locally from my server to the Docker Hub. So these are the containers which are available. Now the other option is uh, I can do the same. I can just click on uh, sign in. So the benefit of this one is like uh, if you want to access your uh, containers what you have to do is you have to open hub.docker.com you have to give your credentials and then you have to access it but the best part of docker for windows is you can just right click over here and you can just go to the repositories and it will show all the containers which you have right and from here you can you can just uh, spin up now Docker has a, a Docker for Windows uh, basically has two options. One is the, the, the front end UI through which you can deploy a container. The other one is a PowerShell. So one, uh, so when you, uh, when you uh, install Docker for Windows, by default, it will configure a PowerShell for you. Now, if you want to access it, what I'll do is I'll just go to the PowerShell. I'll just type in uh, run as administrator. Yes and if i'll just do a docker ps you can see i don't have any any uh, container running so if i check for docker search uh, let's say a web server so if i'll do this it basically go to the docker hub it pulls out all the the repositories which are available and it will showcase me so what i'm going to do is i'll just do a docker run hyphen d run as a daemon hyphen p 80 colon 80 uh, so the uh, so i'm doing a port forwarding from my laptop to the container so let me give the name of the container web server let me give the name of the host name for the docker as a web server and then i'll just do it uh the container name so now right now it's checking for the images locally so if there is no image available locally it goes to the uh it goes to the uh, Docker Hub and it will pull those images for you. So if you see the the the, the pulling is happening and it's going through the different layers. So we just have to wait for a while. So 
So meanwhile, let me do one more thing. So as I said, there are two options. You can use the front end and the back end. So this is the back end through PowerShell or through the command line, you can use it. And through the front end, So, so let me do one thing. Uh, so I already have a container and uh, I'll do a rm hyphen f and just copy paste. I'll just copy this paste it remove now let me see what happens so now there was a conflict over there which I have removed now if I do a docker ps I can see my uh, so my application is open to so if I'll try to access the the application through 8080 it will redirect the port to 80 port internally to my web server uh, to my uh, web server and uh, I'll be able to access the uh, the web server right so if I want to get into the web server what I'll do is I'll just uh, copy this container ID copy and I'll just paste it and I'll give uh, the, the shell as bash and if you see now I'm into the container right so if I'll do a host name you can see uh, that's the web server so if I have to so what I'll do is I'll just do an exit. I'm sorry. Exit. Yep. So now if I'll do a Docker PS, I have the container up and running. I'll try to get the IP of my laptop, uh, which I believe is this one. And I'll try to go to the browser and I'll just do it. 8080. If you see now, I'm able to access my. Uh, web server through Apache web server through the 8080 port right so this is how you do it from the front end now let's talk about uh, sorry uh, this is how you do it from the back end now let's talk about the front end so there is something uh, which docker uh, offers which is known as kitematic so kitematic is an is a ui through which you can directly deploy your containers so what i'm going to do is i'll just go to the uh, to the logo right click just click on kitematic and it will give you an option to download the kitematic i'll just click on download and it will download it for you so if i go to the downloads and Just wait for a while yep let's click on that uh, let's go to the show in folder I guess I already have kitematic uh, unzipped so this is how it looks so what I'm gonna do is I'll just let me go back yep there it is so what I'll do is I'll just move it. Uh, I'll just move this logo over here. And if I'll click on this, if you see, okay. So let's do one thing. Uh, let's go back and let's try to find the, the zip file, which we downloaded just now. So this could be that file and I'll just extract it yeah so I'll just mute my uh, the volume so that you won't get that irritating sound and so if I'll go back I'll see there's a folder over here and I'll try to click on the executable application and let's see what happens so if I'll go back let me remove this and so if you see now it's it's basically checking for the wrapper at the back end so 
uh, right now I'm using uh, Hyper-V where my application is running. So uh, this is pretty simple. If you see over here, it, the both are interconnected. So if you see I have web server running. So let's say I want to use, uh, I want to create a new container. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just, uh, let's say Jenkins, I want a Jenkins. So I'll just type in the Jenkins, so I'll just click on create. So whatever I was doing from the backend, the docker run, hyphen daemon p, it will, it will configure everything for you automatically. So if, uh, if you see, it's downloading the packages for me. And if I'll go back, if I'll do a docker, let me clear the screen. And if I'll do a docker images, you see right now I have one which is the uh, which is the HTTPD, which is for the web server, Apache web server. Now let's wait for a few seconds and you see you have one more image uh, got downloaded, which is for the Jenkins. So we just have to wait for a while and it should be done uh, in another maybe in 10 to 15 seconds. Yep. So if I again do Docker images, it should show me. It got stuck. Okay, so if I do Docker images, you see the Jenkins images uh, image got downloaded. Now it, it's it's spinning up uh, the container for me. So as Jenkins has a lot of process where uh, it basically uh, uh, deploys the entire uh, uh, what do you call it? the WAR application, which is your uh, Java WAR application, and then um, it will it will share. If you see over here, right? So this is the password which you have to use to for the initial login right so if i'll go back and if i okay let me do one more thing so if i do a docker ps you see a new uh, vm got created as i'm not uh, okay yeah so as i'm not uh, as i'm not giving any particular uh, as i'm not forcefully putting or, or doing a port forwarding it will automatically select any of the random ports and it will assign it to the um, to the uh, container so if you see i have assigned 8080 to my web server so similarly if i'll go here if i will try to access 32769 uh, you see my Jenkins uh, Jenkins is uh, is getting ready and if I go back to Kitematic and try to copy this password and if I'll just put it over here it will start the initial uh, setup wizard where uh, it will it will install all the recommended packages for you so this is how you can use your front-end and the back-end tools to deploy the containers so let me quickly uh, destroy them docker stop i can if i want to force it i can just use hyphen f or if i try to use docker rm command it will say the containers are up uh, are up and is in use so i have to do this so just copy it that's it so let me see the images are there uh, I'll try to prune this so it basically helps you to so the prune command uh, basically helps you to uh, remove any unwanted images networking devices or the storage devices which are not in use so if I do a volume I see there is a one volume attached I'll just do a and it will prompt me yes if I do a volume there is no volume same let me go do it for network also and if I do 
does the same thing so there there so there are no network devices which are free right now so it, it did not uh, clear any of them yep so that's it for now so let me uh, before ending the session let me also quickly show you uh, how to create a docker swam it's a quick one so that uh, this will help you to uh, set up a cluster and in my coming sessions i'll be explaining about how to uh, what docker is how to uh, con configure the containers how to uh, push the containers to the docker hub how to build the docker containers how to use kubernetes how to do the integration how to use a specific network drivers for your uh, docker swam containers how to create replicas how to do an uh, uh, what do you call how to uh, perform an upgrade uh, sequentially without bringing down your application so you will try to build up a five node cluster uh, five node uh, maybe three node uh, docker swam cluster where we'll will create five replicas and maybe my my replica will be on the one dot x version and i'll try to upgrade to the three dot x version without bringing down my application so we'll try to explore uh, all of those stuff so uh, those sessions will be specifically for the beginners who doesn't i mean who doesn't have any knowledge in docker so yeah that's it thank you